Hi guys, welcome to Gemma Bee Makes. I'm Gemma and this is my crafty podcast where I talk about all the things that I've been making over the past couple of weeks. I tend to talk about knitting, spinning, crochet, a bit of sewing, a bit of quilting, um, anything that takes my fancy at the time. Um, I have been doing lots and lots this week. I really wanted to get back to you guys and podcast a little bit sooner than I did, but it's the school holidays and well, Everybody was going back to school, I had back to school things to do. I went on a camping trip and um, yeah, just the time got away from me. So here I am and um, I can tell you about all the things that I've been doing. So, so much is the answer, so much. Last uh, episode, I didn't quite get to finish, so I have a little bit extra than I normally would. Um, simply because the boys woke up, oh, I haven't turned the monitor on. He'll be fine. I'll hear him. He's loud now. He's two. You heard him. He shouts down the stairs. He'll be fine. Um, so yes, I, uh, I've got lots to talk about. So I'm just going to dive straight in with everything that I've been doing. I've got quite a few little finished objects to show you. So this is not a little finished object. This is a big finished object. So if anybody follows me on Instagram, you'll have already seen this, but this is my hoodie shawl cardigan by Suzanne Summer, um, Sosu Knits. And it is one of the coziest things I think I've ever made. So I'm gonna put a video up, up. Here it is, here is my cardigan um, that I've got to admit has gone a little bit wrong as you might be able to see. Um, it's supposed to, I think, go straight down the front. And I've got this nice like little bat wing effect going on, but do you know what? I can wrap it round. I can be super snuggly. Um, and do you know what the yarn, this yarn guys is so nice. So it is Northshire yarns. I know I go on about this lady, but Annika is a brilliant dyer and the base is just beautiful. But um, so this is Northshire Yarns in Hypnotic Lagoon. The stripe here, in fact, you can see it better on the cuff. So this stripe here is feathers. The blue here is denim. And these little stripes at the bottom here where I kind of run out of the denim is um, November mornings and this is 70% uh, baby alpaca, 20% cashmere and 10% silk and it is absolutely stunning. I love it so much. Um, I do actually have quite a little bit leftovers so that's good. I, I've got a full skin of the feathers left and I've got, made, well, quite a, a good skin of the November morning, so I can make myself something you may, um, again. Where do I start with this? Um, I'll start you with my trials and tribulations, eh? Because, do you know what? This was one of the most fun constructions that I've ever done. The pattern is brilliantly written. Um, it was really interesting. I've never knit anything like it. So you start off by doing the shawl, um, I'm going to show you a picture of my back. So here's the back of the cardigan. Um, you can see it triangles down. So it's, if you imagine you take it out, it would be a big triangular shawl with um, yeah, with places to, to fold and body parts. Yeah. <laughs> so you start doing the big triangular shawl part, then short rows to create the body. Uh, pick up some sleeves, do some garter stitch. I did my garter stitch wrong because I was going to run out of the denim yarn, the blue. I thought, oh, I'll stripe in the November mornings because of the different colour um, on the on the actual pattern. Um, I didn't look at it properly. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't look at the pattern properly. And actually the bottom has got a really big garter, um, garter ridge on it that stops it from curling up um, that I didn't do. But anyway, I, I like my, mine how it is. Um, yeah, so I, I, miss, I missed out 
big piece of the pattern. <laughs> um, and then you pick up around the whole of the outside of the hood and the, let's have a little look, and to do this awesome I-cord bind off. Um, I think I might have done mine a little tight because the hood kind of like sits around my face oh, but guys this is so lovely so it's just it's just the snuggliest card I can think I'm ever gonna make I don't think anything is gonna be um as soft and as lovely as this so although I have made lots of mistakes within the cardigan um because I didn't do the short rows properly um if you can see here again I'll stand around and prance around but I don't, I don't think they line up properly at the front, like, I can't, I think I kind of remember thinking, oh, I've got to the right amount of stitch count, I'll just stop. I shouldn't have just stopped, I should have carried on and then decreased somewhere, I don't know, I've added extra stitches and I've lost stitches and I've added an extra increase around the front panel, so it kind of triangles. <laughs> It's not supposed to do that, but you know what? It's really wearable and um, uncomfortable, and I love it lots. So that is my cardigan. So I managed to finish a jumper last week and a cardigan this week, and now I have no garments on my needles. So I'm gonna have to remedy that. <laughs> but yeah, I finished all my big. I finished all my big projects. So I'm. I'm gonna have to think. I'm gonna take it off right now because it's really warm. Um, but yeah, I'm happy. Um, I also finished a couple of pairs of socks. So, in fact, I'll talk about my uh, rainbow socks because these are the ones that are on the sock blockers right now. So, my rainbow socks. I um, did a little bit of a competition last week, a competition, a giveaway. Anyway, I made these socks and I did a little design myself and I thought there's a few people have asked about it. I'll pop it up on Ravelry for anybody that wants to have it. It's just a free bit, but I needed a name. So uh, I asked people to write in the comments below what we should call these socks. It's a slip stitch pattern. I have done them in a rainbow minis and I think, well, I'm sorry, I'm going to check because I can't remember your name. But I did choose the name of the pattern, which is Slip the Rainbow. So these are the Slip the Rainbow socks. And that suggestion was given by Natalie Gallagher. Thank you, Natalie. Um, so Natalie, I'm going to um, see if you can get in touch with me. I'm on Instagram or Ravelry or YouTube. Leave a comment, but I will... I will write a comment in the last one and hopefully you should get a notification through um, to say a big thank you. I also was going to do a random winner so I will put a little video of doing a random winner here. And congratulations to you too! Um, so guys, I said I was going to make project bags and here we are. Here is a project bag that is on its way to one of you guys and also some hand spun yarn. So this is some hand spun that's been in my stash for a little while and I thought they went really, really nicely together. So that can be going to one of you too. Um, I'm going to say Natalie because I chose yours uh first you get to choose which one would you like would you like the bag or would you like the yarn and uh, my lovely random winner you get uh what's left <laughs> okay and uh i just like to say thanks guys for everybody commenting and um giving me lots and lots of suggestions i really appreciate it because i really can't think uh when it comes to naming things and uh, <laughs> It was appreciated. So the pattern is now on Ravelry. There is a link in the description below. So if you'd like the pattern to the slip the rainbow socks, it's down there. Just click the link and it will take you to it. Um, I am. Um, I have changed my Ravelry name. I didn't know that you could do that. So I'm now Gemma B Mix on Ravelry as well as YouTube and Instagram. If you want to find me and follow along. I am not very active on Ravelry. In fact, I looked the other day because I wanted to change my name 
Um, I was just going to start another another Ravelry, another profile because, um, and then realised that you could actually change it. So that was really good. I didn't have to lose all my um, all my things. Um, but the projects that I've put on there, they're bad. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um so yes they are the socks i also finished another pair of socks so i'm just gonna pop these on here yeah so this is another pair of socks that i finished um in absolute record timing because i really enjoyed doing them um this yarn is again north shire yarns in her bfl sock base this is put the kettle on and the heels toes and cuffs heel, <laughs> heels toes and cuffs are coop knits socks yeah i believe in the color malachite um and the pattern is the same as the rainbow pattern i just wanted to make sure that i could do the toe and the heels and the cuffs right and it's just a plain vanilla sock so just stocking stitch throughout and then the heels toes and cuffs of the slip the rainbow pattern um, just to make sure it all fit nice don't look too closely I've made a hole in that one I'm going to switch it around that way you can't see it <laughs> yeah so three three finished objects in one week I'm super impressed I'm uh, I'm happy with my progress there um so because I've been working um, on doing the socks writing out the pattern um, I'm not really a computer kind of girl. I like computer games. I am a bit of a gamer. Um, I say I am. I, I... It was about seven years ago when I actually sat down and like you really used to game. Like pre-child, pre-children is I used to like playing on the computer a lot. But actually sitting down and uh, writing out a Word document. I don't think I've done that since school. Um, it's just been my birthday. I just turned 37. So it's been a good... 20 years since I've uh, sat at the computer and and had to use a program so yeah it took me a while to learn how to do that again but anyway it's all done <laughs> a little bit of effort it's okay it's the things that you need to learn how to do don't forget these things just keep at them it didn't take me long <laughs> but yeah that they're, they're the little things that um just unexpected things that I didn't think would take too long but actually took me quite a few days to remember how to use a computer program. What else I've been doing? They are all my finished objects. I have also been knitting on a jumper. So this is one of my uh, works in progress that I didn't get to show last time. So I'd already cast this on a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I've made quite a little bit of progress on it because actually this is my only whip at the minute. This is the only knitting project I actually have on the needles because I've finished all my other ones and it is a scrumply scrumply mess. But this is the Flax Light. Yet again, I think this is the third time I've knit this. So this is the Flax Light by Tin Can Knits and um, this is the size 8 to 10. That is my phone, excuse me. What was I saying? I was talking about my jumper. So this is going to be a Christmas present for Edward. This, I've knit it out of my own hand-dyed yarn. So I am alternating skeins. This is one, this is the other. And I actually do have one more. I think that's probably a bit excessive for an eight to 10 year old, but I wanted to make sure that I definitely had enough yarn. Um, and it's going really, really well. I I really enjoy this pattern. It really is very, very easy. And it's a really easy wearable, good looking jumper when it's finished. Um, so I knit one for my nephew Milo. He's just turned one and I gifted that to him. Um, his birthday is two days before mine, so I gifted him his. Um, he is growing very fast. It was supposed to be for Christmas, but he would probably not fit in it at Christmas. Um, I, made, I wanted to make sure I got a little bit of wear out of it. I've knit one for James. His is for Christmas. And this is going to be for Edward. Edward is seven, um, but I knit the eight to ten 
because I wanted to I wanted him to grow into it really <laughs> um yeah so I've got the body to go I think I've got three more inches on the body before I can do a little bit of ribbon and then pick up some sleeves but like I say this is the only knitting project that I've got on my needles at the minute so it's actually going really really fast um and that is all the knitting I seem to have lost a little bit of inspiration of what to cast on next um, I would like to do a little bit of Christmas knitting so I think I'm going to pull out um, a lot of my hand spun and I think I'm going to say to my mum because she is the only one that watches this in my family and anybody else that may be watching it um, I'm going to say this is the time where you're not allowed to watch this anymore because it's going to be Christmas gift knitting from now until December and then you can have a binge watch of everything when it's all done okay thanks okay um yeah so what else have I been doing I there's lots of knitting there's lots of finished objects I have also been spinning so it is the second leg of the tour de fleece going on at the minute I must admit, I think I did the first nine days and then it's kind of all gone downhill from me. I haven't spun anymore, only because I um, I ordered lots of wool <laughs> and I wanted to show you guys before I started on it. I finished a full skin of Corriedale from John Arban, you know my favourite, and this is a colorway called Galetta Guitar and I got 500 meters and it's about 110 grams so um, definite fingering weight yarn um, and I did it as a two ply so I made two bobbins and plied them both together really really happy with how this turned out I think it's a lovely color um, and it's so heathery and lovely so when the fibre came it had like bits of black and all different colours and as you spin it it all kind of gives it a lot of body, a lot of texture and um, yeah quite a lot of depth to it, it's really nice and it, when I, it's the first time I've ever spun Corriedale and when I was plying it from the bobbin when I'd, when I'd spun, sorry, when I'd spun the singles onto the bobbin, the singles on the bobbin were so squishy. Like, I've never been able to do that with a with a with a bobbin before. Let me. I've not got a full one. <laughs> I was going to show you, but I don't have one. Um, oh, I do. I do. This is a. This is a, what else I've been spinning at the moment. So, as you can see, when you squish this, it's got a little bit of squish to it. But it's quite dense this squished and it's got so much bounce to it and so soft i was really really impressed and i've never felt that before um and as soon as i give it a really good soak and set the twist to it um it's just so bouncy it's just oh yeah it's lovely it's really really nice um and I really, really enjoyed spinning it. So as, as you just saw, I have been spinning a little bit more. So what's this? This is, again, more John Arban. Oh, it's called Blue Spruce. So this was one of the colours I got to um, make my handspun jumper, um, but it didn't quite fit. It didn't, quite, it didn't quite have enough contrast, contrast to go with the others. I made a little sample of it and, um, yeah, it was too like another colour. So I never used it, but it's still really, really nice fibre. It's Blue Spruce in Harvest Hues by John Arban, which I do believe is Zwarbles and Corydale? No, it's not. Falklands, Falklands and Zwarbles. So it's really, really nice. Um, and again, I have enjoyed um, spinning it. But I just lost a little bit of my mojo while I was finishing up the other projects and spending all my time on the computer. Um, this it, little uh, spinning wheel is the Electric Eel Nano, but my lovely, lovely other half 
got this for me while it was still a Kickstarter and it was the best surprise I ever got. <laughs> and it is actually the only wheel that I spin on at the minute. I do have a traditional, an Ashford traditional, um, but my hips have been really hurting recently. And um, yeah, the electric one is perfect, especially for spinning fine yarn, which I like to do. Um, so my plans for spinning. So I have been doing this nice blue spruce, blue spruce, <laughs> let's put that away. Um, I have been enjoying doing the blue spruce, but I know I keep going on about spinning another jumper. So in the last episode, I finished a hand spun jumper. It took me months to do, but I really, really enjoyed the process. And I just want to do another one. I've got fibre in my mouth. <laughs> And I showed you all a picture of my lovely crowned crane. I'll probably see if I can pop another picture of the crane up here. I loved his colours um, and it was quite inspirational. So I got myself a crane, a crane's worth of wool from the word of wool. It came. <laughs> so this is my birthday haul. Oh, this is going to be so crinkly, isn't it? So I got Corridale because I enjoyed doing this Corridale. And actually, these are very, very similar colours. Um, yeah, but because I enjoyed doing this one, I got all Corridale this time. My last jump up was all different blends, different... Um, different sheep. <laughs> it was all different uh, wool. different blends sorry I couldn't think of the word then um yes this is all Corridale so this is burgundy oh, I'm gonna keep them in the bags you know I hope you can see it this is eggshell then lightning no I'm not I'm gonna take it all out and I'll just cut see you ready there we go cut sees. <laughs> okay I've got burgundy I have eggshell I've got lightning, seal, mm -hmm. and petrol. No, petroleum. Petrol, I can't remember what it's called. But here is my crane. Mm -mm. I'm so happy with these colours. I hope they're coming up um, just as much so. Yep, here's my next jumper. <laughs> I really, really hope um yeah i don't know i hope i'm really looking forward to it i'm sure it will take another year i don't mind that the the last um the last jumper i bought my yarn at yarndale last year and it did take me around uh, i think i didn't start spinning for the jumper until maybe february so I, I had it in my stash for a little while. Anyway, it took a few months. I think, again, I might start spinning just in my own time. Um, I'm not rushing for anything. I really got into it last time and I spun so much drum. I spun. Spun. Anyway, I spun the, spun the yarn really fast and um and did the pattern and did the jumper really fast because i was enjoying it so much i'm going to try and take my time a little bit more with this one and it's coming up to christmas well it's not it's september but christmas gifting christmas making i want to make my christmas lovely this year um so i think i'm just going to take my time with it i've got it all prepared it is my next spinning project and yeah so I'm happy. It's here. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> so as well as um, my fibre that I got to spin, I also picked myself up uh, just a little skein of yarn. This is West Yorkshire Spinners in Rum Paradise and I saw it the other day in John Lewis and I thought I'm going to give myself another pair of rainbow socks because what do you need more in your life? Rainbows. And I thought I would try my slip the rainbow pattern in a self-striping yarn. I'm gonna see if it works. I'm not quite sure how many rows this yarn will actually give me in a sock. 
um, I need at least five rows for the slip the slip the rainbow pattern to work. Um, so I will see. If not, I've got myself a nice uh, storm cloud and a rainbow. So that's going to be my next pair of socks. Um, but yeah, that was a nice little purchase. So I did have um. So I got some money for my birthday. I picked myself up my spinning project and I got myself some wool and I went to have a nosy around Leeds town to get myself some fabric to make myself a coat. So last year that is what I did for my birthday. I got myself some material. I make myself the Kelly Anirak by Core Closet Core Patterns. Closet Case Patterns but they've just changed the name. Um, and this year I really really wanted to do the same but I want to do it in um, uh, a waterproof material and I couldn't find any anywhere so my local little fabric shop which is fabrics for all was actually closed it was a Monday it was shut um, so I couldn't go there um, but I went into B&M fabrics in town in Leeds market and it's a lovely fabric shop she's got two stalls one on the outside of the market one on the inside um, and they had some nice waterproof fabric but it was quite um, a little bit for children's coats you know it's really big prints like rainbows and raindrops and um, while lovely and I probably would wear it I didn't want it to be for my everyday winter coat and the fabric that she had um, that was quite plain was waterproof but it's more for like um, waterproofing furniture outside oh that is James he's woke up again excuse me one minute oh guys James is awake and uh, he's actually a little bit sad so I'm gonna wrap this up again oh my goodness I am really quickly gonna show you my English paper piece in blanket that I've been making out of the boys clothes so all the baby clothes that I couldn't bring myself to throw away I have been um, English paper piecing into little hexagons and making lots and lots of big flower motifs so i have eight of these really big ones that you've seen before and this giant stack of little ones so how many have i got here two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen seventeen I have also got a little stack of the amount that I need. How many is there? 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So I've managed to lay them all out into an awesome little pattern. But yeah, all the little baby clubs, little stars, everything feels so soft. Little Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, it's just so cute. They're little tiny baby grows with dinosaurs. Oh. Um, somebody asked me the other day, um, is it alright doing the English paper piecing with the baby clothes that are jersey, um, jersey material rather than, um, you know, cotton quilting material? And my answer to that is, mm -hmm. <laughs> I This is the first time I have done, I did a little test English paper piecing to see if I liked it with some fat quarters and yes it was easier to sew together the quilting cotton than the jersey baby clothing um but I've not had a problem with it I don't know if I'm going to when I take all of the uh, cardboard out of the back and all the, the paper out of the back and sew them all together I don't know <laughs> we'll see um but yeah so I've got a few more of these ones to make and then the way that I've positioned them all into a blanket, I will then have another, I think I worked it out as another 20 blocks of just three together. And that should all fit together quite nicely, I'm hoping. But I've really, really enjoyed doing these. So I haven't showed you these for quite a few weeks. But yeah, as you can see, I've got quite a stack of things for the blanket little motifs and little blocks for the blanket and I'm really looking forward to getting to the point where actually I can put them all together I don't think I've got very many hexagons left um, maybe about 50 
So actually I think I'm going to have to start sewing them all together so I can take the hexagons out and reuse them. But that's been um, one of the projects that I've really, really enjoyed working on on an evening at the minute. Like I say, I've finished all my knitting, so actually the sewing has been really fun. Um, what else was that? I'm sorry, James has really put me off. <laughs> He's sat quietly just watching this thing on my phone at the minute, so um, hopefully that can last for a little bit longer. I'll carry on talking while ever I can, I'm just going to rush through it. <laughs> So last time, again, I got cut off. I'm going to crinkle it now. I picked up some yarn in a D stash. That is Hey Sister Yarn Co. In the colourway Drizzle. Ooh, what am I doing to myself here? And um, if you don't know, Hey Sister Yarn don't die anymore. Um, they are two sisters in America, they open their shop for a short while, they do a lovely podcast. Um, they haven't for a long time, I know they want to but they are so busy. But they did kits to make a Zweig or a Tecumseh I think it was, quite a few years ago now. And I picked up one of their kits in, um, and made my, myself a Zweig. And then I felted it last year in the washing machine like an absolute idiot um, but this colour was my second choice when I was picking my colour I actually wanted this one as well but I knew I could never get it um, and someone had put theirs up in um, a D stash on Facebook I knew I needed it <laughs> but it didn't come with the contrast colour so they've got four skeins of drizzle but I need a contrast colour and I really wanted something really light and just lightly speckled so I tried to dye myself a colour and I've got some um, undyed yarn and some acid dyes and I thought I'd give speckles a go and this is what I got so I wanted a nice chestnut brown speckle and as soon as my speckles hit they separated and became orange. <laughs> I put a little bit of yellow in there um, and I did manage to get a few really cool speckles. Let's have a see what I can see there. So. These ones here, they worked out quite well, but this colour does not really go with this colour. I just don't think it matches, like the warmness, it's got a different tone to it, it doesn't match. So I need a nice contrast colour, now I've seen one and I think it is by Ted, Ted Knits, Ted's UK. Oh. I can't remember, I'll put it on the screen. Um, and his colour is called Creme Brulee. Creme Brulee. And it looks like it will be an absolute perfect match. Now I sent Ted a message and said, please, please, please dye more Creme Brulee. And he is actually doing a shop update for Virtual Yarndale next weekend, I think. And he promised it will be in there. So I am just holding out for some creme brulee because I really think it will match really nicely. I do have a couple more skeins of yarn but I could try do it myself. Um, I don't think I've got the right yarn to do it. To do, now I'm not a professional dyer so I don't know, but to do a nice speckle the yarn needs to soak it up really really fast without it splitting. <laughs> uh, and I don't think I've got the right dyes or the right yarn to do it without it all separating. And yes, I actually like this, it's quite nice. Um, it's quite peachy, orangey, it's got a little bit yellow in there. I actually think it will knit up really nice and make quite a nice wintry hat. Um, but it is not going to match. It's not gonna be the contrast color for my Zweig. So, Zweig on hold. Oh, still, this is still living downstairs because I still like to get it out of the packet and give it a little squidge every now and again. It's, uh, yeah. 
It's really what I want to. Uh, it's really what I want to be making. I wonder if I might cast on the zwag and do my little swatch and do up to the point where I have to put a contrast colour in. Because then at least it's there, ready. Oh yeah, I might do that. Anyway, that was all the yarn that I've got. That was the sewing. That was this. James is actually seems to be okay. What was I talking about before I went upstairs? I want to make a coat. So that is what I want to do. That is my big winter project. I would like to sew myself a winter waterproof coat, but I cannot find the material. That was where I was getting that, wasn't I? So the material that I found was either too childish or for outdoor waterproofing and not really suitable for coats. Um, I'd quite like to do something waterproof and maybe quilt the lining so, I've, so it's nice and thick. Um, the coat that I made last year is starting to get a little bit well I, I've worn it every single day it has been my only coat that I've worn I have one of like a, a mac a waterproof mac that um when it's really raining and I have to do the school run I'll put the mac on but my coat is the only coat that I've worn all year round it has been an absolute brilliant coat I've loved it but it's starting to see a bit of wear and tear now the pocket started to come off it the other day um, but I've worn it every single day for a year so um, it's really time for a new one but like I say I'd like a thicker comfier cozier one for winter waterproof and wintery so I need to go find myself some fabric so if anybody out there knows of any nice waterproof fabric that I can make myself a coat with um, I'm going to go with my friend next week, I think, to um, Fabworks in Dewsbury, which is not very far from me, maybe about half an hour away. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have a day out. I'm sure James will love that. <laughs> um, but that's everything, guys. That was a lot, right? That was a lot to fit in. Um, I feel like I've been talking for a very long time. I've really enjoyed spending time with you um, this week. It's always been a little bit rushed at the end. I'm very sorry about that. Um, I will try and catch up with you as soon as I can. Hopefully we've got a little bit of structure now. So I should be able to do a podcast a little bit more structured. Like go check out my Ravelry. Uh, download yourself a free rainbow sock pattern. And um, like and subscribe. It's really nice to uh, watch this community grow. I've loved talking to everybody in the comments. Um, and it's really nice to see uh, lots of new faces. So thanks for joining me, guys. And I'll catch you all next time. See you later. Bye. I'm going to burp. <laughs>